Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So one quick question that I really wanted to take a few folks were asking and uh, one of the uh, connection on my LinkedIn asked this question that, uh, hi Naveen, I wanted to uh, understand your viewpoint on below scenario that if you have to create test automation framework from the scratch for application which are created in C sharp, okay, will you implement test automation framework using any language or Will you align it with developers tech stack and use C sharp for a scripting as well in your test automation? See, this is a very common question and this is sometimes creating unnecessary confusion also that if, what if my application development is happening in C sharp or Java or Python or any tech stack, do I need to use the same tech stack in my test automation also for UI automation or for uh, uh, web automation or uh, API automation or mobile automation or whatever kind of automation that I'm doing it. See, it's not mandatory, although you are getting some extra advantages because if the tech stack is same for the development, it might help you that a good sync with the developers and a good sync with the CICD pipeline and everything and the kind of tech stack that they are using for the infrastructure builder point of view and everything that might be helpful in your test automation also for the integration point of view. Plus, if your developers also, they want to contribute for your automation framework, that also they can do it because if they are coming from C sharp background and they're also writing the code, let's see in this case with the C sharp also, then in that case, it might be helpful for them, right? So they can also check your PR. They can, you can also check their PR and then the understanding between, uh, with a common text tag between developers and, uh, <clears throat> the Q8 automation engineer is good, but it is it really mandatory. No, it is not at all mandatory. It really doesn't matter that your application is built up in C sharp or Java or whatever. If you really want to develop in your preferred language or tech stack in automation, you can do that. For example, let's see if you are coming from the Java background from last 10 years, you have worked with the Java an application is actually developed in C sharp or Python. Then I don't want to learn Python or C sharp. I'm a Java guy. I understand Java better and I can write a better code in Java as compared to other languages then in that case, I can go with that. And there is no issue as such with the integration point of view and other things as well, right? So it's not mandatory that how exactly they are going to understand my code. No, they don't need to understand your code. Your automation team has to understand your automation framework code. And then you have to raise the PR among your developers, among your automation developers I'm talking about. That is very important here. Some people say that, okay, no, you will you might get some uh, problems or issue with the integration with the other text tech. No, it is not like that. You think, think an example of let's see C sharp and then you have created one Jenkins pipeline or GitLab pipeline or Microsoft Azure pipeline also, but your automation framework that you have developed, let's see with the Python or Java, you can easily integrate your code automation repositories, your Git repositories, your GitLab repositories with the main pipeline. It will just pick the test cases from there, run it, on the cloud or on the specific server and then publish the report and that's it. It's nothing related to the main tech stack over there or something like this. No, right? Same thing if you're creating, let's see one Jenkins pipeline also, Jenkins file also, or any build file or any YAML file that you're creating in the GitLab or if you're using GitHub Actions also. So there are various templates that are available for every tech stack. So it really doesn't matter the developers are using a specific language, then you have to use the same one. You think about that your career is all about a specific language. And then you have worked from last seven years, eight years, 10 years with a specific language only. Let's say you have worked with the JavaScript. So in that case, it will be difficult for you to adopt a new language, adopt a new tech stack, a new tool, a supported tool that you have to adopt. In that case, your productivity will be less for sure. You have to learn, you have to put the effort in terms of which is the best tool for the, let's see, for the build automation point of view. If you're coming from, let's see, from Java background, so I know that how to create a Maven project or Gradle project, which Maven command, what is a Maven build cycle, life cycle, which plugin Maven that I have to use and everything. But if you're moving, let's see, with the Python or C sharp, then you have to find out those things in that specific language as well. Same thing for the unit testing framework point of view. Also, it will be difficult for you to implement your test cases in a specific uh, unit testing framework. For example, let's see for C sharp, you have to write the test cases with the N unit. But if you're coming from, let's see from Java background, then in that case, you have already used J unit or test NG. Then again, you have to check about with the C sharp or uh, let's say you're using Python. You have to use PyTest over there with the C sharp. You have to use N unit over there. Then in that case, it will be slightly difficult or maybe you have to learn 
that particular tool. So this is not at all mandatory. It's actually a myth, especially some people say that uh, my UI application is developed in React application with the, let's see, JavaScript and TypeScript developers are using it. It will be very helpful for me to implement the same thing in the same language, JavaScript or TypeScript also. No, that's again a myth. That's a wrong thing. You should not do that. Yes, out of learning, out of experiment or for self-learning for uh, there is no other option left. Then you can go with that. That's okay with that. But you say you implement the things, you propose a solution that we can do in the Java also, with the C-sharp also, with the Python also. Not, I don't want to learn JavaScript for that. I'm coming from Java background. My hold on this language and the entire Java tech stack, for example, or Python tech stack, I'm pretty much comfortable with that thing. Then in that case, you can uh, give a POC and then say that, see, it really doesn't matter. Because for Selenium point of view, think about for automation, web automation point of view, either you are using, let's see, Playwright supports multiple languages. Selenium support multiple languages. APM supports multiple languages. So you can easily say that for Selenium, for Playwright, for these tools, what matters? Only application matters. The web application matters so that I can inspect the element, find the right locator, expert, CSS, ID, whatever the unique locators are there. I'm bothered about those things. I'm not bothered about that which backend or server side language that you have written, it really doesn't matter for me because Selenium understands only the browser and the elements available on that particular browser, right? Same thing for the API automation point of view. API controllers, let's see, are written in the form of uh, Python or C Sharp, but you are using rest assured with Java, for example. So for me, what I need, I need just API endpoints here. You give me the endpoints, give me the payload, give me the authentication information, give me that response, risk code and response body and everything. We just need to collect that data about the APIs, that this will be my endpoint URL, this will be my payload, this will be my authentication mechanism, this will be my uh, JSON payload in the response as a POSO that I'm passing it and all those things. So you just need to collect that data. You're writing the code with the rest assured with the Java and calling those endpoints, hitting those URLs. That is what we are bothered about it. Because you think about you're calling tomorrow payment gateway APIs or some banking server APIs. Let's say you're calling SDFC bank API or HSBC. HSBC is written what? HSBC written, let's say in C sharp or maybe in PHP. And you are writing a code. Let's say you're calling a code, uh, those APIs from the postman or maybe rest assured or any specific client in any language that you're using it. It really doesn't matter. From For us, the endpoint that they are using, we just to call these APIs, get the response and then use it over here. That's it, right? Same thing for the, third-party systems, external systems, or any internal APIs that you're using it, which are being developed by developers with the help of some other technology that they are using it or a specific language that they are using it. So don't compromise your skills. That is my uh, point or that's my stand on this particular question actually, uh, this person actually asked. So try to convince there two major factors. First is the resources, the skills. That matters a lot. The entire resource that you have, uh, I mean, you have a skill of, let's see, language A, and suddenly you're moving to a language B text tech, then it will be difficult for them to migrate, right? Second problem is that you have to hire a specific team. Let's see for a, um, sometimes difficult to find a good JavaScript automation engineer or TypeScript automation engineer. Then in that case, you can go with some other languages also because an automation language of the development, that really doesn't matter over here. Right? So that's my opinion. Advantage, no, no, uh, for sure, that maybe the dev and the QA, they always like sync in terms of communication, in terms of they understand the same tech stack and everything. Tomorrow, dev team also want to contribute here. They can do that. Right? Other than that, I don't think so much differences here. There are, I have seen thousands of projects where dev tech is different. Automation tech stack is totally different. Right? In fact, I can give you my example when I was working with the Cisco and Cisco, as you know that, okay, it's into majorly into the, you know, networking and then segments and all those things. And um, they were creating a lot of VMs over there and everything they have written in the form of Python. But I used to work with Java. I created my mobile automation framework with the APM with Java. I created my web automation framework, Selenium with the Java there, with the Selenium web driver that I have used. And then for performance testing point of view, I was using LoadRunner and sometimes I was using JMeter also over there. Right. So it really doesn't matter, guys. Same thing. Uh, I'll give you one more example with the Walmart. In the Walmart, 
multiple teams were there order management user management product category management portal team is different service management is different integration with the asda integration with some other applications are totally different they have they were using different different tools and technologies over there in terms of development but for us we have designed one common automation framework with java and one common automation framework with the python and the entire tech stack is actually used or entire tech team actually used for automation point of view these two frameworks written in java and python python we were using for the api point of view java we were using it for the uh, ui automation point of view and it really doesn't matter at the dev side what kind of tools and technologies that they were using it and it was a very successful model and then we were happily using it and then we were leveraging our automation like anything there so there are multiple projects i have seen and uh, 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 in fact a lot of friends also there in the industry and then they are also exactly doing the same thing here as well so for me the answer for this question is it really doesn't matter you can convince you can give a poc and you can talk to the management and talk to the team that it, it is not mandatory to use c sharp because i'm not comfortable with c sharp my team is not comfortable with the c sharp i have to learn and then i have to start after that and then you have to think about other whole picture in terms of community support in terms of number of resources are really available or not or maybe you stuck somewhere do we have enough resources or enough community support available for that particular language or for that particular tool this factor also you have to think about it so with this note what do you think about it you can write your opinion in the comment section that's my opinion about this topic and if you have any other question you can ping me on linkedin or you can write uh, your question also in the comment section so that in the next video i'll take your question and then with these videos i can really help you out that uh, what do you what's my opinion about these kind of questions over here thank you so much keep watching navin automation labs